we moved in here in 1967. The house itself wasn't, you didn't have that lower roof, it was just the slates at that time, and it was just bagged, if you can see up there, this kind of canvas up there, that was just that, so around the, the mid-70s, this lower kind of a ceiling was put here, and um, as you see, it's very basic, there's only two rooms, bedroom, and this living kitchen area, or whatever, like, you know, my aunt just sleep in this bed here, my grandmother, my grandfather slept there, then my grandfather died, God rest his all, and uh, I used to sleep here on the floor here, um, in a pull-out pit. My grandfather died in 1971, and uh, that left my grandmother, myself, and my aunt here. My grandmother then died in 1980, and that left myself, and my aunt, Annie, and um, I got married in 1983, and Henny lived here until 1994, until she got her illness, and she was sick for a while. And, but, um, you know, she kept this little place like the old house. You know, you'd love to come in to look at it, like, you know what I mean? You'd have people walking up and down the road, they'd be going down to see the detached houses. But they'd always have a look there and just stop across the way there. And the, she'd always have the front door open. It carries a bit of history already, like, you know, for me, you know, as a child growing up in it, like, you know what I mean? I mean, I had some of the happy days, happiest days of my life, I suppose, in here, like, you know. I remember across the way where the nursing home is there, I used to live with Derek now and James Kennelly. And, uh, you was supposed to be always over on the airplane. I mean, this was all our domain, all up by the hill here and all that, like, you know. Um, Mike Kennelly's piggery down here, that was kind of a fort for us, like, you know what I mean? It was, you know, there were great times, you know, during the 70s, late 60s, 70s, like, you know. But obviously things have changed since then, like, changed an awful lot. What else? My grandfather was an old tinsmith, travelling tinsmith, you know. So these used to be two, the last two gallons he made before he, he died, you know, he used to make the gallons and um, he used to sell them to the farmers and that are the farmers are called him. The last two gallons he made, they used to be up, there used to be kind of a little attic over here, they used to be up there, I don't know where they did disappear, or did they fall down or what the story is. Possibly they fell down. I don't know, maybe somebody just took them for, for uh, you know, as a memorabilia or whatever. I remember being in here with no electricity. Mm. And uh, we got in the electricity, not too sure the year or you no. Know. Then we had no television, only the radio. Then we got a black and white television from Glynn, uh, uh, Costello's in Glynn. Mm. Well, and I never married, no. She was um, one of 12, 12 in family. Um, she was kind of devoted to her father and mother. Like her father had a, an accident in about 64, 65, and uh, he had to have plates in his head and his legs and things. And um, she, all the rest of them married on in Henna State. You know, as a lot of, in them days, a lot of the people did, you know, there was always one that was stuck with the family. Like, so she stayed on and she was here until the day she went, like, you know what I mean? She was devoted to the father and mother, like, you know what I mean? My father actually made it. My father was a carpenter. Like. They used to tackle that up under the pony during the summertime and they'd go out to the crags around and they'd get all the hazels. The cousins of mine, they, they took off the two wheels and got it over on the side. There used to be another piece of backboard. It has rotted off now, obviously, but they took off all those and took off the wheels and got it on its side and just put it in there. Preserve it at the time, it was perfect. A lot of those little bits and pieces now would have been bought by members of the family, you know what I mean? When they'd come or whatever, you know. So I can't actually remember remember that, but I can remember uh, those two plates there. I remember my mother buying those two, the ones with the ship on them. And uh, there used to be another one of those, two of those actually. My uncle uh, bought them at an auction one time and he brought them down there. So there was another one, I don't know where they did one of that went. And um, that was originally in the house when we came in here. Eh? I remember this used to be paint and that up and doing it up. She loved blue, like, you know, she paint all that by hand with a small little brush of there, days and days. They all see it and some things. These houses are four or five hundred years old. Like, they were the old mud houses that were made from clay from the river and they were cold, cold houses. I mean, there was ground. There used to be a massive fireplace there. The fireplace just come back to about here, if you can see. It used to be massive. But um, 
it was grand when the fire was on. But when the fire went out in the winter time, believe me, you'd feel it. You get up in the morning, the water would be running down the walls, so, you know, the condensation, the dampness from it. So, um, I mean, I locked the door with him the 22nd day of December 94, and he died on the 12th. I locked the door with him, and uh, I haven't been back in ever since. Yeah, she got sick in September. She started to get pains in her head, and um, she brought her to the hospital, down to the doctor, obviously, first, and uh, he sent her in for a few tests and just said they couldn't find anything wrong. And uh, sent her home, and she fell down once or twice more. Brought her in, then they did a full scan, and they discovered she had a brain, a brain tumour deep in the, the base of the brain. She only lasted six weeks after that, like a nine years. Before we settled here in Eskeaton, we travelled all the areas around West Limerick, which we would have maybe over as far as Croom, Adair, back to, not Tar, but maybe as far as Glen during the summertime, if the weather was good. Then in the winter time, they'd have their little pitches, which would be closer to Eskeaton, it might be out on Crees or maybe somewhere like that, where they'd settle for maybe a month at a time. Whereas in the summer time they'd only spend a week or a couple of days at a time, they'd be on the move the whole time, you know, while the weather was good. But um, until 67, as I said, we moved in here in 67. And, uh, but at that time you had an awful lot of travelling people on the road. Now I can remember as a young boy, you know, I mean, going here, there, everywhere, everywhere. You'd know exactly where they'd be around, you know, but um, it was an awful lot, but it just died out, like, you know. Then they started getting the cars and the. the Caravans, the towed caravans, will say, and they start moving faster mm. and moving on. Didn't let them start moving into Halton sites. Mm. And uh, Halton, some people got houses, council houses, and all that. And the travel away life died in. And my grandfather was cropped up, as I say, he had a bad accident. He was cropped up and he needed, I mean, it mightn't have been the best accommodation in the world, but he needed something so, um, to move in here. And uh, they never, no, they never went travel anymore. They'd be there, there. Um, you know, it was near it to everything for him. You know, I mean, the doctor wasn't too far away, and whereas if you were out in the caravans, you know, trying to get the doctor at that time, nobody had cares. And he used to complain a lot, but he said because he had plates, and he said as well, like, you know, from the accident. So uh, he actually died up at the pump there, you know. He went up for a bucket of water, and he sat down, and he'd smoke a woodbine. But this day, he, he lay down, he didn't wake up, but... Seamus came back to school and he said, there's a few people down around there, he said, the priest is down there, you know, I was young at the time, he was about eight or nine, I think, and uh, it was kind of, it was registering, and it wasn't regi registering, like, you know, but I remember Mrs. Hewson was our teacher, and she called me in about an hour later, then she said, Willie, she said, you're going for us after dying, you know, and as I say, I was with him all my life since I was nine months old, and, you know, I, he was, <laughs> he was a, uh, he was my father, really, to me. And you know what I mean? He, uh, he reared me as his son, like, you know what I mean? I looked at him as, even though I called him Dad, I never called him father, I called him Dad, like, you know. But um, he was my father figure, like, you know what I mean? But sure. He was 68 when he died. Uh, my grandmother died in 1980. She was 76 when she died. She just got a heart attack. I remember the same night I had uh, been out um, with a disc or something, I think, yeah. It was a disc or something. I came back and she was sitting up in the bed. So, uh, uh, and he was at the other side, and then he said, she said she's getting chip pains in her chest. So we walked down to Dr. Knowles, uh, the two of us, and they're just to Dr. Knowles, he came up straight away in the car, and uh, he said, look, we'll just send you in, he said, anyway, just to do a few old tests to make sure everything is okay. So she was two days inside, and uh, she got a massive heart attack inside. But, and uh, she was very, very um, religious, like, you know what I mean? Every, I can remember my grandmother every night without fail she would kneel there at the bed and say the rosary like to herself like you know but um, every night without fail she'd be there like to say her rosary and she'd be in bed around half eight nine o'clock get up in the morning she wouldn't kneel in the morning but she'd say her prayers sitting in the bed in the morning but no matter what way it was that night the rosary she'd have to kneel there and say the rosary like you know she'd be in the old traditional travelling woman the two plaits and the earrings and she used to wear a black shawl she'd go down maybe once a week down for to collect her pension and uh, rather than bring down a bag or collect a bag below she used to have a little basket a little, uh, like a little wickerware basket she'd put all her messages in there what she'd buy she could actually, I remember, can you remember sitting around here now 
and in the old place, in the old fire, in the, or the old her, you sit over there always. And uh, she'd sit there every night and she'd be calm on the hair, like, you know what I mean? And she could actually sit on the chair and the hair would be sitting under her, like, you know, it was massive when they were longer. But uh, obviously with the years in, you know, it started to light out and things, but she did have it, that was the hair. At one time it was like a horse's tail, I suppose, who they did it, it thinned out and lightened out, you know? But, um, yeah, she was a character as well, like, you know what I mean? She worked a good number of years there in the local bar in Kennedy's. She's not in the bar itself, no, she used to do the, the kitchen there with Mrs. Kennedy. She was there for 24 or 25 years. She'd go down in the morning around 9 ish, or half 8, 9 o'clock, and she'd be there until around 4 or 5. You know, she, it suited her, like, you know I mean? She never she never asked much of her life, you know what I mean? She said she won the lot, you know, it, it wouldn't have changed her, you know what I mean? It, it, she'd still be the same, any, like, you know? She'd finish in the evening time and there six o'clock whatever and she'd have her two or three glasses of Guinness. This was she never drank like she was about forty, like, you know. But the smoking part of it was another thing I like to say. She never up till the day her mother and father died, she never smoked in front of anybody. Oh. Even though they knew she smoked like, you know. She'd have her flag seat over here in the drawer. This little drawer on the right hand side there. And obviously they knew they were there, but when she went to fag, she go to back. It was never mentioned, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> So, you know, I suppose a lot of people in them days were, were, were the same, you know. I suppose they, you know, they did respect for the parents more. At one stage from the corner down, there was 350 people living down, because there's all little rooms, if you can see the parts of Mobile down along there. So you had some great characters then. Next door you had uh, Maisie Singleton and Joe. And there used to be a little test house across the road here, and she was Madge me off. But um, we used to be afraid of our life for her, like, you know I mean, she was, she was just standing at the half door, she was like a witch. She's a long hair, like, you know I mean, you'd be passing up and down, she'd make a dart out at you, you know what I mean, you'd be running out into the road. There were poor times, like, you know what I mean, but they were happy times. You know, looking back, I mean, you've all the mad cons that you want now, but, you know, as the fellas says, if I could turn back the clock. If I just take a look in the, in the, in the place, Camera. It has taken some photographs in its name. December 94, that's the last paper I ever read in here. Or one of them, I know. Um, brings back an awful lot of memories. <laughs> Photographs. Irish Press, 93. Oh, any more for you? Probably this. Oh, yeah, feather, feather, case you job. Maybe this is a little bit. Yeah, there's a suitcase in there, and it's she store all the the photographs, the, all the old photographs, and there were some great old photographs, you know, the old caravans, you know, the old horse drawn wagons and all that, you know. But, uh, it doesn't seem to be there now, but it has disappeared too. Let's just keep her change in there, you know. Let's and that bed, she wouldn't change that bed for nobody. They bought it, I think, when she came into the house. Or was it in here when we came in? I can't remember now, but... No, no, they bought her when they came in. No, she would not move over to that bed. That was her bed, you know, she didn't want any other bed. Uh, I don't know, I, to be quite honest with you, I don't know where I have to do the stuff went out there. The suitcase of photographs and dressed in the... Martin Gulls of the horse. There should be more of them as well around there, I, I don't know. But, um, 
My father died in '83. That was the last. That's called a flat car. That was the last one he made before he died. The last one he finished. He was actually in the process of making another one when he died. Yeah. He used to make the, the the barrel top wagons. And he used to do all the designs and. They work with very, very basic tools, you know what I mean? Simple tools, like, you know what I mean? That's all, all that, that's all handcrafted, all that. There's no electrical, you wouldn't even use them in all that, you know? You know, see all the, the carbon cutting, you know? that's what they call butterfly carbon. As I said, this is the first time I've been in here in, since 1994, like, you know? But, um, I love the place. Sure. Actually, that's life is the philosophy.